This video is about animal nutrition and diet, and we'll look into what nutrients animals need and how they get them. First, an adequate diet must satisfy three nutritional needs, chemical energy, building blocks or macromolecules, and essential nutrients. Recall that one of the major goals for biological systems is to make energy in the form of ATP. However, animals must also obtain organic carbon and organic nitrogen to build organic molecules, such as proteins and nucleic acids. A third requirement is to get essential nutrients. They're called essential because animals cannot synthesize them and must obtain these nutrients from the food they eat. Essential nutrients include amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals. We will look into each one of those. The essential nutrients function as substrates for enzymes during important cellular processes and as cofactors during biosynthetic reactions. Each animal species requires particular nutrients, and therefore not all essential nutrients are the same for all species. An example is vitamin C in humans, which is required but cannot be synthesized like it is in other species. In the diagram to the right, we can see how nutrients in the form of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids are required in the conversion of linoleic acid to phospholipids and prostaglandins, two important molecules for cellular structure and signaling. Let's begin with essential amino acids. We know amino acids are the building blocks to make proteins and that there are a total of 20 in nature. However, essential amino acids are prefabricated and obtained from food. In humans, essential amino acids are isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. In infants, histidine is fundamental and it corresponds to the ninth essential amino acid. Now let's look into essential fatty acids. These are needed for the synthesis of phospholipids, signaling molecules, and in the storage of fat. As with other nutrients, animals can make fatty acids, but they lack the molecular machinery to create fatty acids with double bonds. Therefore, these are obtained from the animal's diet and can be found in seeds, grains, and some vegetables. Let's look at the example of linoleic acid again. Notice that in this case, linoleic acid is a substrate for the fatty acid denaturase enzyme, which will participate in the production of phospholipids and prostaglandins. Next, we have vitamins and minerals. Both are required in small quantities. There are 13 vitamins required by humans, including the famous vitamin B2 and vitamin C. Both of these are water-soluble. There are also fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, which aids in vision, and the famous vitamin D, which has variable requirements given that our bodies can synthesize this vitamin when exposed to sunlight, thus reducing the dietary need. In terms of minerals, we can find them assembled into proteins, like chiron in the transport protein hemoglobin. Also, minerals like sodium and potassium serve in the functioning of nerves and in maintaining osmotic balance. Some examples of minerals include sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, copper, iron, chlorine, and iodine. Finally, we will talk about dietary deficiencies and define malnutrition as the lacking of a constant supply of chemical energy. Malnutrition actually affects one in four children around the world. This undernourishment has the potential to develop into irreversible physical damage because under normal conditions the body obtains energy from carbohydrates and then from fat. In an undernourished individual, both carbohydrates and fat are lacking and the body starts breaking down proteins. If untreated, this will result in death. When insufficient nutrients are found in an animal's diet, individuals will obtain them from rather unusual places. For example, some herbivores lick salt from rocks as to obtain sufficient minerals that the plants they eat cannot supply. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Images and diagrams are from Campbell's Biology 11th edition unless otherwise stated. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all of the details you need to know about these services in our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. 
For many information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.